But anyway, we're going to be hearing from uh, David Baskin and John Hildebrand. And uh, take it away. All right, thank you. So again, feel free to get up anytime and get some more food. I don't mind at all. Um, like you said, I am David Baskin, product manager with Misumi USA. And this is Bobby Azimi. Um, he's one of our account managers here in the California area. And uh, John, who he mentioned, is out carrying soda, I believe. Uh, he'll be up here in a little bit. <coughs> so just a real quick uh, look at myself. Uh, University of Wisconsin. Um, I did spend a lot of time in design and nuclear power. Um, hated the work orders, so moved on to sales in Japan. Uh, learned Japanese and then came back and did some uh, uh, machine tool sales and applications. So my background is a lot more in the machining side and we sell mechanical components. So, you know, some of your, uh, I don't know, most of you have probably turned on a lathe at least once, maybe, when you were undergrads, no? Skip that class. Um, but uh, that's a little bit about me. Uh, John, who's not here real quick, um, he spent uh, his entire career designing automation. Um, and he's one of our support engineers for California. So if you call into Misumi and have a question that requires an engineer, um, he'll be there to support you in what you need to do. He won't give you the answer, because you're students, but he will support you. Um, and Tom is the account manager. Um, he's also carrying soda, I believe. Um, but he's also here, um, and he has a long history in pneumatics. But enough about us, and into uh, uh, Misumi. And uh, like he mentioned, like versus like say McMaster car, our catalog is just for automation. We don't sell chemicals or rubber gloves or trash cans. That's not what we do, even though we have a big catalog that's yellow. <laughs> Which, by the way, we have uh, nine extra of anyone to watch them back. <laughs> Can't escape. Um, and I apologize, this presentation was made for undergrads, so I'm going to kind of skip through this. But basic idea of automation, right? Uh, less, less hands on your parts in your production, making it fast and efficient. Uh, robots maybe don't uh, build things as fast as humans, but they don't take bathroom breaks. They don't uh, go on union strike. Um, they work all night. So the overall efficiency of automation and robots considerably better than humans. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Um, some of you see the yellow robots here. <coughs> You're familiar with these, Fanuc robots, single arm, multi-axis, kind of uh, place to place. Okay. So this particular company, Fanuc, are you guys familiar? Anyone? Yeah. There we go. In the factory that makes hundreds of thousands of these robots, do you know how many people they have running that factory? It's about three football fields. It's run by 15 engineers. All the robots make the robots. I do kind of want to, just uh, as a general thing, uh, kind of expand your idea of automation. It's a lot more than just robots. Uh, you know, when you're out in the field, depending on what you're doing, especially if you're in like a manufacturing environment, uh, you're going to buy the robot, program it. It's not that hard. But what the real engineering is going to be that, that crazy mess on the end that holds the part, turns the part, and manipulates the part. The end of arm tooling um, also includes things like gantries and conveyors. But it also includes semi-automated process like, uh, like workstations. So some test fixtures, uh, things that just make the manual process slightly more efficient. Everything to welding fixtures and so forth. The only reason I mention this is not because I don't think you don't know this, but I want you to know why our product selection in our catalog is what it is. A classic example would be a simple indexing table. So all we're doing here is moving from point A to point B. This is very simple. Motor, pulley, idler. You got the shafts, you need bearings. You see the linear guide up there, or linear bearing it can be called, to uh, screws, washers, right down to the little feet. So we, we strive to be a one source, one stop shop for automation and assembly automation components. So we do have the little feet, we do have all these components, we do not have trash cans, okay? Uh, we cover a lot of different areas, um, everything from power transmission, um, this is uh, like pulleys, gears, to uh, like shafting, uh, locating kind of components. Uh, this is probably more specific to the manufacturing process. Does anyone know what a locating pin is? Yeah, I didn't know either until I joined the company. So imagine all the pieces of sheet metal that go into making a door of a car on the back side, the framing part. So all those are stamped in little pieces and they need to be held in the same spot and welded together, correct? So locating pins, as you can see in the far left there, 
locate things into a fixture and orient multiple pieces into one spot. Many more applications, but that's what it does. On to more mechanical things that I'm sure you've probably done the math on, like in the middle there, to aluminum fr uh, framing, structural things. So we run the whole, the whole gamut of, uh, of mechanical components from linear motion, rotary, springs, bumpers, uh, your transmission components, everything from the you know, gear sprockets uh, to already pre-assembled conveyors uh, and so forth, pneumatics, uh, locating components, construction, handles, uh, washers, shim tape, right down to if we don't make it, we'll even send you the material to make it. Now, <clears throat> so anyone sells those components, right? You can buy them from McMaster Car, like you said. And this is the, this is the dilemma I kind of want to bring out. And that is, as engineers, you're out there and you're faced the, the, the fundamental dilemma of, of sourcing parts. You can go with a stock or standard component, or you can go custom. Ultimately, those are your only two options, right? So the advantage of stock, right? Easy, right? You can go anywhere and get it. They're common sizes. Um, you can download cab model for it, things like that. The problem is, it doesn't always fit your application, right? And I'm sure like many of you, every application is different and it never seems to be the right size. Your sanding shafts I hear, um, things like that. So your other option is to go custom. So to go custom you need to send it to either get in front of a lathe and do it yourself or you need to send it to a job shop to have done for you. In that case, you need to make the 3D model, right? Not so bad. Then you have to make a manufacturing drawing or drawings. You have to determine material, your heat treat, your finishes, your tolerances. You have to have one for every step of the manufacturing process. And then you have to send it out to the job shop who then is gonna say, oh, you want one? Great, but we have a minimum of $200 or maybe $70. If you want a black oxide, even if you want one, it's $70 just to do that. So has anyone here had something sent out to a job shop? Not yet? This one? Okay. How was the experience? Yeah, it's expensive. It's expensive, right? Turnaround Okay. How long did it take you? It two, weeks. two weeks. Okay. So this is, so if you hear what he said, two weeks. Well, that's pretty typical, actually. If you're a... Uh, if you're a big company, maybe you can get a little bit faster, but they actually don't get it much faster. So what Masumi does is we occupy the space between standard and custom <clears throat> by giving you all the advantages of standard components, but the flexibility in your design of custom components. And we call it configurable. So we aim to, to, for this market right here. I'm not gonna stand here and say that you can uh, do everything that you ever imagined out of our catalog but we managed to take more of that custom stuff and make it a standard component. So, <clears throat> what is configurable? So, configurable components, uh, it's the same as we can do anything, like uh, you can go online, you can configure a computer, right? I mean, you can even configure a pizza these days, right? So, this concept is not new. We have assumed we've been doing it for mechanical components since the mid-1960s, but this concept is not that new. And what we uh, bring is the idea that uh, you can take a part, a geometry, and you can specify each of the dimensions across a wide range in fine increments for all the dimensions. It makes a smart part number. You can download the 3D CAD in any format you want. And then you can order with the part number and you can order just one at mass production prices. Yeah? Pretty good, right? So the idea is you go, okay, so how do you manage to get such a low cost on a single shaft? Very simple. When you have one customer who wants 600,000 shafts, that's easy to make it cheap, right? But what happens if you have 600,000 customers that want one shaft? You essentially have the same volume. It's just harder, right? And that's where we have the configurable model um, and we manage those ranges. So I'm going to kind of breeze through this. I think some of you have had experiences with machine shops. This is one for a roller. Uh, pretty simple, uh, but actually getting rollers exactly how you want them is, is really complicated. You have to have the urethane baked on, it's got to be machined, you have to have the bearings pressed in, um, and all that. 
You have to make a manufacturing drawing and all the details that come along with that. Um, if you're really good, maybe even like, you know, maybe you can do it an hour or two hours. Um, guys out in the field, that's what they're spending on this kind of stuff. And that's for every component that they're sending to a machine shop. And this is what they turn into, right? <laughs> but it doesn't have to be that way. With Misumi, I'll kind of give you a visual of what I just talked about, the configurable model. You start by choosing a geometry. This is for our linear shaft. So just a shape, right? Basic orientation. Then you take that shape and you put in your dimensions. Choose your precision. Like you said, like say a linear shaft instead of sanding it down. If you know what your bushing is, you can choose the, the H7 or the, the G6 tolerance you need and it comes in ready to match up exactly with that bushing. Please stop standing your shafts. Um, then you can, uh, this is a shot of the website. Then you can draw, download the 3D model. This is just a clip of the preview. You can download the model. Um, I'm sure you guys are done with all of your uh, CAD classes, sorry. You can't submit these for homework. But uh, you got that. The uh, part number's here, which is automatically generated by your selections on the left. So you input the length and whatever you need. Generates it automatically in the bottom. Every time you change something, the price is updated live and the shipping. So the part number looks confusing, but all the information we need for that shaft is in, contained in that. So within about you know, five, 10 clicks, in a, in a couple minutes, you can have your CAD into your, into your assembly drawing, know the price, know the delivery, and have it on order before you even thought about starting a manufacturing drawing. So at Stanford, you guys are pretty smart. You can probably see the advantage of this all the way through the supply chain. Not only you guys, for example, on a custom machine or custom equipment, globally about 46% of the cost is your time. So if you're doing something custom, saving you guys time really is saving you money, no matter how cliche it is. And right through the rest of the process, when you're out in companies and the purchasing department really hates you because you send all these custom drawings out, uh, they're gonna love you when you use Misumi because it's just a part number for them. They don't know what it is. They just put the part number through, and it comes in, it's fantastic. So all the way through the process, it's really convenient. Um, do you guys, I've, I, I'll go through this one real quick. Um, it's a design example of this system right here. Um, again, it was kind of made for uh, undergrads. But uh, this is again showing the breadth of the product that we do. So again, those shafts come up. We start choosing those shafts. Uh, we got a ball screw. Um, you can start by choosing those. Then you need the, the linear ball bushings on there. You can see on the right we have a lot of selection, much more than what's shown on there. Now you need those supports. Looks pretty simple, but if you go out and try to get standard ones, there's not a whole lot of options for you. And how, the profile of your machine could be very important. But with us, you can configure it, put it onto a plate. Remember I said we sell plates too. And uh, your ball screw support units. Uh, also, you need the, uh, the ball screw, uh, sorry, the nut on there, uh, the coupler, then the, uh, sorry, then the uh, nut mounting bracket. You need to support that motor and that shaft on this side. So take a look up here. I know it's a little bit small. Every dimension in blue you can configure. There should be no reason that you need to go out and make a custom bracket with Misumi. Going on uh, to all the other components, say uh, urethane stoppers, bumpers, and things like that. Uh, this is, a, a, granted, a boring example. It puts a cap on a bottle, but you would be surprised. Like the number, you know, you see the show uh, how, how it's made, right? So all the machinery that you see in there is hopefully completely filled with Misumi components. It's a, uh, I, I won't spend a lot of time on it, but uh, if you think about this, with the, with the availability of like linear actuators, right? Putting, putting a cap onto a bottle, first thing that comes to mind, okay, you bring it down and then you turn it and you're done, right? This machine is actually designed to do it mechanically, so it's much cheaper, less moving parts, less cost. So it's kind of an interesting, I'll be a boring example. I'll skip the movie on that. Um, and then there's the, uh, the website. So all this is available on the website. Uh, we'll go through that real quick, just so you know how it works. Can I kind of see how it, how it looks and how it reacts? 
And uh, then we'll uh, start moving into some specific examples of the products. So this is just the main site, MasumiUSA.com. It'll redirect you to a really stupid URL. I didn't get to choose it. But uh, MasumiUSA, M-I-S-U-M-I. -S -S -M -I. Uh, we do have three divisions, so be aware that you want to be in the automation components. On the left-hand side, these are we can start drilling down through the products here. It's got pictures for those of you that don't like to read. And uh, since you mentioned the linear shaft, I'll start there. Is that all right? Yeah. So a linear shaft, pretty simple. Uh, inch or, uh, I'm sorry, solid or hollow. Uh, we'll go with a solid one. There's filters here, and you can further uh, drill down from here. I'm going to jump to a really simple one right here. It's, uh, it's a straight linear shaft, nothing fancy. So here's the configurator. Nothing really fancy about it. All you do is on the left hand side put in the information that you want. Uh, there's additional information on the right and on the bottom is your, is your part number, price and delivery. So I'll keep it pretty simple. Choose your, uh, your diameter. Here's those tolerances that you're sanding. You can choose the one you want. Make sure you have already decided what your bushing is going to be. We'll stick with the G6. Uh, material. Bearing steel or stainless. If you want, uh, I'm going to change it to stainless in a second. Please keep your eye on the bottom there. You'll see the price and delivery update live. So the stainless is a little bit more expensive. But again, if you wanted to go out and get this at a machine shop, it would be a lot more. This one's pretty simple though. Now, okay, so I want, uh, I want hard, cro uh, hard chrome plating. Now here there's some uh, uh, LKC, I don't know what that is. Uh, up here on this button is the alterations. Uh, it's a little bit small. You can expand this. It's also identical to the, uh, um, the catalog page. So LKC, it changes the, L, the, the length dimension tolerance. So there's a lot of options here. So as an engineer, you know, you're going to have to figure out your application and what you want. And as you go through this, it won't seem so mind-numbingly like dense. But, uh, but yeah, so you have a lot of options. You can see here also, uh, you know, V grooves, uh, key grooves for if you want to put a keyway in there and so forth. Uh, wrench flats. We'll put one in there just in case. So I put in the wrench flat. Now it's telling me, okay, now where do you want it? So it's telling me that I can go from 0 to 15 in 1 millimeter increments. This is the length from the end. We'll do 10. And right now I'm like, you know what, I kind of forgot where I am. What does this look like? Uh, the 3D preview, it's great. You can kind of figure out, you know, does it look kind of like what, I'm, uh, what I want? That's a little short, right? But anyway, you get the idea. You can get a good visual check here to see if it's kind of what you're looking for. If it is, CAD download. Uh, what, what do you guys use? SolidWorks. SolidWorks, okay. So you can download in SolidWorks. Since you're using SolidWorks, I will give you one thing. All of these are native except SolidWorks. It is a macro file. So open SolidWorks, drag it into your SolidWorks, open SolidWorks, and run it, and it'll draw the native file for you. So that's the only one, just, just so you know, so you don't get confused. Anyway, download it. You're ready to go. Move on to the next part. Uh, down here, it's twelve dollars and ten cents. Ships out of uh, it ships out in three days. Part number is right here. Uh, once you once you uh, you know have put in your email address and have a, a basic web account, uh, you can track everything with your My Components. It tracks where you've been on the website. Um, so if you've configured something, you can go back. If you order something, you can go back and look at the order. All that kind of stuff. Can you um, with that, with that sure. Number in for like three weeks later, you need have the order number, it knows everything, right? Or do you have to add the wrench thing? So, when, once you, so all the information in the part is contained in the part number. Okay. So if you, have a, if you have a purchase order number and you want to re reference that, that's fine. If you only need one thing on there, just reference the part number. So you don't have to go back and configure it once you know the part number. 
which is that part stuff. Right, which is right down here. Which for us, after spending years looking at them, makes sense. I'm sure it doesn't really get. Um, and then just at the bottom, uh, these are some. These are the tables and uh, the information of how it's set up. So you can see that, for example, um, you know, if you're looking at the configurator, when you change, say you change the OD of the shaft, and then you go, oh my God, the length that is available has changed. Come down here, and you can see how it's set up. So the smaller the diameter, a little bit shorter the length that's available. So you can come down here and kind of see how it's organized. And these are the exact same tables that are in the catalog. And that, uh, the same thing that I had there before. Um, and then other website stuff, related products, and so forth. Are there any questions on how the website works? I have one. Yeah, go ahead. Say, uh, <coughs> say you have a self-assembly in a robot you need an extra one, what's the fastest way to take your list of consuming parts and just order them without having to type in each one and select each one? I feel like I uh, gave you that question. So uh, I'm going to go over into the, uh, the quoting and kind of the e-commerce part of the site. Um, this is the uh, engineering or configuring part. Uh, you can get there up on top here by hitting quote um, or uh, down here you can go add to cart. Uh, I'm going to take this one over with me. Uh, just uh, just so I have something in there. And it normally doesn't fail. It's because I share my account with many people, so I just kick someone out in the office. So here, you know, I already know the price and delivery, but you can go get a formal fancy quote with a quote number and give it to your Stanford purchasing department, or do they do by themselves? Uh, we're going to be doing this by ourselves. Okay, all right. So in that case, you can just hit order now, and we'll all be happy. Um, but what I'll do is I'll show you the quote process. So it just all it did was come in here and it, it filled in the uh, the part number and the quantity and so forth. Now getting to his question, so you have a, a whole list of part numbers and quantities. Uh, all you need to do is copy that out of Excel or any kind of uh, um, or Word uh, or anything like that. Uh, come here, sorry, to uh, copy and paste from Excel. And you can copy and paste whatever you want in there. Um, even if there's extraneous information, um, it'll come up and ask you which one's the part number, which one's the quantity. And then you can just import it. Now, if, you've, if you already have purchased it and you have like a, a number already, you can go into your order history and just reorder from that as well. Is that what, is that what you want to do? By the way, this all really matters. This isn't just like stuff we never use. I've had to do just imported a big list of parts for a colleague last week with like 50 parts and all the Excel spreadsheet. I go back and look at past orders to see, hey, what was the part number for that washer that's in perfectly here? So it's, uh, this saves you hours and hours to be able to do all this. So this is uh, this is new. <laughs> they changed it a little bit. Uh, so this is into that my components, um, and from here you can see stuff that I've looked at. Um, here we go. So this is my page. Um, the blue the blue ones are like uh, uh, stuff you've viewed, stuff that you've saved your components list, uh, things like that. Um, if you've noticed that for some of them they get really complicated, you might spend some time configuring it. And once you get it configured, you don't want to ever have to go back and redo that. Uh, so you can save it to My Components without quoting it or ordering it. You just want to save it and come back to it later. You come in here, you click on it, it goes back to the configurator um, exactly how you left it. Uh, on the right in the orange, these are more like purchasing applications. Um, for example, again, you can cut and paste into here like the previous function. Or down here you can see... Uh, um, uh, quotations that you've done. So you can go through there and look at old quotes. And uh, order history too. So if you ordered something, you can go in there, take a look at it, uh, take stuff out, recycle it, and, and so forth. Does that answer the question? Okay, go ahead. So uh, part number is unique to a specific configuration. Yeah, yeah. So if anyone wants to do the math, I think it'd be great. 
So we have about one million part stubs and about a hundred billion combinations of a part number on a page and we have about 4,000 pages. And the answer is, I don't know either, but it's a lot. But you're right, it's a discrete part number for every part. So every little thing that you change, even if it's in 0 0.01 millimeter increments, all that information is contained in the part number. Just as an add on, one of the really nice things is the part numbers make intuitive sense so that if you have four different shafts and you're trying to remember which is which, each of the little letters tells you, oh, okay, well, this one's that and that one's that diameter. A lot of manufacturers, the part numbers are seemingly random. It's literally like they did a random number in your area to get it. But Right. With these, you know exactly what you're getting just from looking at that part of stuff. And the, the first couple letters of the part number don't make sense. And the only reason I apologize for that is because they were generated from the Japanese language, so they make more sense if you speak Japanese. <laughs> but but the rest, like you said, the diameter, the length. Uh, you'll start to get to a point where you order some stuff and you'll be like, oh, I just need to add five millimeters to the shaft. You're just going to go in, change the part number, and send it off again without going through all this process. You'll, you'll get, a, get the hang of it. So that's the, the website. Um, if you want, come back, get some more uh, drinks. The, there's more soda available now. You don't have to ration anymore. Sorry about that. And uh, everyone's good? Uh, feel free anytime. Um, I do want to kind of go into some of the particular products. So we kind of talked about the linear shafting. Um, and so in this linear motion section, So if you're doing linear shafting, you might need some bushings and so forth. So a lot of it's based on like the application. So someone who doesn't understand how they're used, uh, you may not see, kind of, seem kind of random in there, uh, but they kind of go together. With the uh, rotary motion, as you'd expect, bearings and so forth. So this is great. Um, you know, there's a lot of people out there that do linear shafting, a lot of famous companies. Uh, but when you get into the rotary shafts, I mean, this is custom almost every time. The keyways are different. The, the steps in it are different. Any kind of uh, rotary application tends to be very different. So this is a real powerful section for Misumi. And then once you have the rotary shaft, you need bearings. You need to you know, support those bearings somehow. Uh, you know, then it attaches to something uh, with like a pulley um, and so forth. Now, now that we kind of touched on pulleys, I want to show you uh, a new portion of the website that's still under development. I'm going to go out uh, to the top page. It's kind of buried because it's still under, uh, still under development. So we provide all these discrete components and all this configurability, but let's face it, this stuff all goes together at some point. And a lot of it goes together in a lot of the same ways, at least in the basic function. So in this section, uh, modular assembler, which is just getting started, it's kind of a small library. These are common component configurations, sub-assemblies. So if you have two pulleys and a belt, which is obviously a very common combination, you can now configure them as one sub-assembly. So this is a pretty simple example. So you can see here, uh, the drawing on the left, uh, you can start with your center distance, uh, which determines the length of the belt, uh, the series of, of uh, the tooth shape that you want. Um, and as you, uh, as you make selections, it goes through and updates down here all the discrete co components and all the part numbers you need to make that work. So this is a real direction we want to take our products, so not just discrete components, but also start doing them as full sub-assemblies. So for some of you who may have not uh, sized a timing pulley before, this may be a nice resource. Also, uh, in the catalog, the back, uh, what is it, maybe 50, 100 pages, 
um, is all the technical data. In there, all the, all, the, uh, all the math and all the charts that you'll need to size things, whether it be a, a chain and sprocket system, uh, a timing pulley. John, what else is in there? The extrusion. Right. Uh, the flexion beam for beam. Shafting, tolerancing for shafting. Right, that's a good one. Yeah, so if you're not really sure what an H7 or a G6 is, go back there, uh, take a look. It'll tell you what the tolerances are on each of them. And it'll also give you kind of a general foolproof guide to how they go together. So, for example, if, uh, let's take a locating pin. If you want a slip fit or press fit, you know, what you're looking for there in terms of interference, uh, you can determine that there. Um, feel free to cut it out, laminate it. A lot of engineers do. Uh, it's pretty valuable stuff back there. And uh, when I was going to school for engineering, I really wish I had the back of that catalog. So I'm going to jump back now to... Uh, uh, Can you want to show them the technical resource page where the fittings are? It's, it's down by there. Oh, yeah, 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 sure. You can... This one? Uh, it's... Uh, Is that the one it is? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Let's do, what, let's do ball screw selection. Just so I just went down to the technical data. This is just PDFs of that section, just so you get an idea. Um, I know it looks like a textbook, but uh, yeah. So if you're doing like a ball screw system, if you wanted to choose your pitch, uh, your speeds, your, your the the torque or whatever you're going to have, or the power that you need, um, all your calculations there, in a very practical sense, are laid out for you. Is that what you meant, Bobby? Yeah. This section? Just, you can look it up online. <coughs> and you can see there's a, there's a lot of stuff here. Now I'm going to kind of go into the actuators. Um, this is something, so I've, we've talked about all the discrete components. So not only do we are getting to a point where you can start uh, designing at the assembly level, we also have fully assembled products. Uh, the most common example is linear actuators, right? Um, while we're on the web here, uh, in this section, uh, if you are doing it, uh, there's a calculation software. And... Uh, there's, a, there's like a kind of a, a basic calculation software for the timing pulleys, uh, which we had before the website I just showed you before, um, for actuators. The RS one's not on here? You have to type in RS. <laughs> That's right. Is it only in the RS section? Yeah. Off the product page? Yeah. I don't see it, do you? That's, that's all right, that's all right. So, these uh, linear actuators. Um, You're looking for the calculation software, right? Yeah, the RS one, because that one's the pretty straightforward and easy. They're looking for this, just a quick note. Uh, so, a lot of manufacturers have pretty small subset of technical information about the product. Again, I'm not trying to harp on the master I like to do, but they have <laughs> zero. And when you call them and say, hey, Kate makes it, they refuse to tell you. Uh, so you have no clue what loads their linear slides can take. When you look in the back, I, I think it only been maybe once or twice in several years that I couldn't find something in the catalog. And when you call Masumi, they have quite a large staff of people who do nothing but just talk to customers. That's right, that's right. We'll move on. Information is that they are 
and they, they have this bigger thing on it. They can tell you all the loading and give you specific advice for what you're doing. It probably gives us too much credit, but it is true that we do have engineers. Uh, myself, I'm, I'm a degreed engineer. Um, our salesmen are engineers. Uh, so we're built for engineers. Um, as far as I know, McMaster doesn't have an engineering technical support team at all, right? I think I'm safe there. Um, so I'm going to, I can't find this off <laughs> the calculation software. They moved it on me. But, um, but anyway, you should do it by hand anyway. It's good for you. <laughs> um, this one too is, uh, I apologize, is probably a little bit rudimentary. You know, we have, uh, we have really nice uh, actuators that you can kind of build and size, uh, you know, put all different kinds of motors and controllers on. But I'm going to start with this really simple pick and place one. Um, they're incredibly economical. Uh, they're really easy to program. And they move, you know, across the stroke. Uh, you can define, uh, what is it, 256 points? Um, so you can articulate, yeah. Right, I think you lose one line. Right. So, so really simple, really fast, uh, economical, easy to use, easy to program. Uh, for really simple applications like this, um, granted a lot of our, our equipment is used in, in manufacturing processes, but uh, you can see the, it's just simple motion, uh, pushing, pick in place, and so forth. Uh, Bobby here's got one up in front. What it looks like. Uh, there's different configurations for link and profile. Basically, pretty standard. Uh, then you've got it underneath the actuator with the ball screw, and it has an uh, aluminum enclosure. It comes as a kit um, with the controller. You got the motor integrated in there um, for XYZ applications. You also have the option of a handy terminal, or you can use I.O. cables. Uh, interfaces are, are fairly flexible. So, do you have any questions? Uh, well, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no problem. No, thank you. And it comes with uh, the option of a stepper or a servo. Um, so, obviously, the servo is more expensive, but you have a true feedback. The stepper motor, right, counts the steps and the position. So, much more economical um, if you don't require feedback. And that's the ones that are up in the top left there. Uh, they also the same style uh, in, a, in, a, in a cylinder format, so a pushing format. Um, on the right here, we, what we call the uh, LX. Uh, this is a more traditional linear actuator where you buy a, a, a large, do we have one? Yes. Can you get the LX30 up? If you so this is something like, uh, like this, right? So your screw, your carriage, the housing, um, your, uh, your mount for the motor are all kind of as one unit, configure the length and so forth. Um, very nice. The example I kind of was looking at before, you'd be building something like this by hand. Um, now you can just buy the full assembled unit. How convenient. Um, so that's the unit up there. Um, lots of options. So for example, the motor comes out here, right? So what if you have to get into a space that's only the length of this? We have wraparound motors and so forth. Uh, you can also, if you're feeling uh, energetic, you can get the manual ones and do it by hand. And uh, on the bottom is just another variation. Basically, uh, it's a wider platform with two linear guides. So your moment, if you have something that's torquing on top, uh, is a much stronger on that one. The one in the middle is a new addition. Uh, these are belt driven. So can anyone tell me what, why would you want a belt driven actuator versus a, a screw? Remember the gear heads from yesterday and some of them turned backwards. <laughs> So it's fine. A belt-driven one, a little bit less accurate in the position, but they can go really fast. And they can go over really long distances. So if you think about like these, these are all fully mechanical. So the longer you get, the longer your machining and the precision on them are much harder to hold and so forth. So we, uh, we have, uh, we have the, uh, sorry, the belt-driven units from uh, uh, Macron. So we're a reseller of those. And we manufacture the ones on the top right uh, and resellers uh, for this model, which is uh, uh, partially designed by us uh, from another company in Japan. Do you guys have applications that you think you can use for actuators? Maybe. No idea yet? OK. Um, so this kind of gets into the nitty gritty, but suffice it to say that like that little blue one, very economical, fast, ships in eight days, ready to go, plug it in. Um, it's like programming in Excel. It's that easy. Um, this is kind of a breakdown of the steppers and the servo motors. 
Again, server motors are stronger for true feedback. Uh, steppers are more uh, uh, economical and uh, no true feedback. What's the software? What's that? What's the software you use? The software? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's one specific for this, uh, this actuator. Um, I don't have it on my computer, um, but I do have a screenshot, I think. There it is. So it's pretty simple. You're programming by line. Uh, you can create uh, some loops in it, but uh, it's pretty straightforward. So you just, this in here is like absolute position or incremental. So either go to 250, mil 250 millimeters from, from home or from where you are, move plus 10 millimeters. So you can choose the kind of, uh, the, how, you, how you want to define the movement to the position, the speed, the acceleration, deceleration, uh, the push function. This is kind of pushback on it. So if you imagine you're putting a cap onto a glass bottle, when it comes down to put it on, you don't want it to just push through the bottle if there's an issue, right? You want it to have some give. So you can start, you can basically monitor the, uh, the amount that you can push it back. You can zone in, so when it gets to a position, if you don't care how close it is, you can start widening the tolerance on that, um, and jump. So this is, for example, um, this tells you the next line to go to. So two, when this line finishes, go to line two, so forth, back to line one. So it's a loop. There's obviously a lot of other buttons on here that you can see kind of cool stuff and about the I.O. and so forth. Uh, but the basics are right down here in what looks like an Excel sheet. You program through other software in the cloud view or? With this particular one, no. So this one, like I said, this one's like a real quick, easy insert. We, it comes with a controller. You program it like this, you run it. Now, the black one that I held up is one that you're going to buy a motor. You're going to buy a controller, and you're going to program it like that. So basically, that's run by a PLC that you're going to have to buy from someone other than Misumi. Can I show this? Do you guys know who THK is? Um, all right, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> We're better than them, so <laughs> suffice it to say. Faster, cheaper, better, better product. Um, just a quick note, so may say you're doing a multi-axis system, uh, again, because we're good at the machining part, uh, the brackets to create these multi-axis um, units are right there, so they, bow, they bolt right together. THK again, forget them, but they're not good. Um, this is the inspection report I think you were talking about. Um, so these are really nice, uh, fairly expensive units, so they come with a full inspection report. Uh, you can also study your uh, Japanese if you want. And uh, on there, it gives you the actual measured value for the precision type. And these are uh, the new motor line that we have from AMB. Up till now, we've only had a very limited to almost non-existent motor application. Now you can see how nice the presentations are for you in the industry. Which one, at the end there? Yeah. Sure. Can I confess I've never watched it? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I can't make any promises. Is it a movie? I may not have the source file with the presentation. Sorry. So that's kind of the actuators. Do you guys have any questions about the actuators? You don't mention a bit about the pneumatic systems. Mm -hmm. um, could you just read me over the variety of things that you have in that? Pneumatic actuators? Pneumatic actuators? Um, to be honest, we have a very limited selection of pneumatic. We do have. Uh, we do have a few fittings, manifolds, and some of the accessories that go along with the pneumatic system. And uh, we do have one linear pneumatically actuated actuator, um, but uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not, uh, so there's not a huge offering for it. And to be honest, I, I don't know. Tom, I, I know you come from pneumatics. Yeah, I would probably say 
we have care very little, probably just uh, pneumatic fittings more than anything. Yeah. But, uh, so we have a lot more than the, like the electromechanical. So for, for pneumatics, you should go to SMC. SMC. I'm okay with that. Can you tell us about your structural framing? Ah, oh, yes, yes, I'm sorry. Ah, oh, quit telling them who to go to. Do you also have stuff like wheels? Yeah, yeah. So we'll get down into the, uh, the fun stuff, like building stuff. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to this. But these are like the aluminum extrusions. I'll come back to this. And then a little bit further down in the structural components, um, like casters and so forth, wheels, handles, knobs. And uh, I know it's crazy. Uh, this, stuff, this stuff is off the shelf kind of product, right? But we also have versions of them that are configurable. How great is that? So, for example, you're, you're in an application where your door opens up and the stupid handle just hits something, and you're like, you, you know, you're going to hacksaw, but then you've got to retap it. Buy from Masumi, you can configure it. So, casters are pretty straightforward. Uh, we do have a huge selection. Um, a lot of that's based on. Uh, one, like your budget for them, if you just need something cheap and easy. Um, also, some have supports where they, uh, like certain, like locking support where legs come down and lift it off the wheel, um, to uh, clean room environments or high vibration. So if you have a, an item, something that's vibrating or a floor that's vibrating, and you want to keep this um, isolated, uh, things like that. So huge selection there. Does that answer your question? Okay. And uh, back to the aluminum extrusion. So I don't. <laughs> um, I would say go to the uh, beta tool first. The beta tool? Yeah, show me the beta tool. It makes it a lot easier to stack Sure. <laughs> Do you guys know what we're talking about with extrusion? Yeah? Okay. The main yeah, I know. There it is. So this is a little uh, tool um, that uh, when you start uh, designing, you can, uh, that we did. So this kind of lines up. So you know extrusion has different sizes, right? So in different thicknesses and so forth. So once you get into it, uh, being able to match the hardware to that particular profile based on its size can be a little bit challenging. So this site helps you direct that. Oh, it takes a long time. The first time, it has to load everything. Uh, it, no, it just takes, it has to load each picture individually. While I'm loading that, just a quick note about the aluminum extrusions that this movie does. They're uh, pretty important thing. One, they're really, really cheap for aluminum extrusions. And I don't mean cheap to low quality, it's just low cost, very high quality. Um, also, very high tolerance to color. When you, cut, when you buy things cut to length, they're plus or minus some length. The movie, as far as I can tell, has the highest tolerance for aluminum extrusions when you buy them. So it's, uh, the other thing is fast. So if you know if you're trying to build like a giant mobile uh, frame for your robot and you need it next week, um, that actually is quite possible. Which is great. And it also comes when you download it with alterations. So once you you know add your uh, your, your mounting and your, your, your structural mounts, um, it, it comes with the alterations in there. So hmm. once you assemble it, it'll generate a build material with everything in there, and you can then again download that. Yeah, so, so for aluminum extrusion, typically it's kind of become like the lumber of machine builders, right? So people buy long lengths of it, they throw it around on the shelves, and then they get out their hacksaw and they try to cut it the best they can, and they're trying to tap holes into it. Now that you guys understand that what we do, the configurable model, so you can get everything cut to length, to how you need it, straight, 45, plus any of the holes tapping and anything that you need to assemble it, all through the same configurator that I showed you uh, earlier. Um, and like uh, John said, you could just download the model. Um, you probably will never want to model that exact uh, profile. You probably put in a square. But with us, you can actually do it the way it should be and use the actual uh, profile. Um, and there aren't many people that do offer the alterations that you do by exclusion from other companies. You get them and you have to uh, 
you know, put the alterations in yourself. And yeah. Hopefully you have, you've got a little bit longer length than what's your need, so you don't have to, you know, uh, cut and ruin and ruin potential uh, components. The other alternative is that you can uh, send the machine drawings to someone who's done it, and then it will take a while to actually get the machine, and you hope that they got it right. Does anyone know why you want that special profile, not just a square in your cat? Put that sawworks on the side of your density of aluminum, you can tell how heavy your robot frame and table is going to be. And then you can figure out if you're going to be able to actually lift it by yourself or if you're going to be buying such strong frame pizza over the weekend. Yeah, so just, uh, I guess you guys already mentioned 8020. They're fine, uh, good company. Uh, they offer somewhere around 85 different profiles. Uh, we offer 231 different profiles, uh, specific to machine builders, so you can get it in black oxide, uh, safety yellow, to uh, a glossy wash down finish, to standard anodize. Does that work or not? No, it's all right. But I, I, uh, I personally think using the configurator is best because you'll get the, the CAD download. Um, also in the catalog, you'll see the section on it. Um, the way it's organized, it, it incorporates the two types of uh, the, uh, the profile series to the series of bracketry that you'll need. Um, everything from end caps, brackets, uh, uh, all the hardware you need to make something. Plus that configurable model for panels. If you want to put up some polycarbonate or Lexan, you can just tell us the outside dimensions. It's a part number. It comes in, mount it, want some holes in it. That's also part of the configurability. You can choose up to 4,000 uh, 4, millimeters or 4 meters. Uh -huh. so if you're building a bench or whatever, a table or a fixture, and just, we have like the corner sit on Yeah. And there's no cut charge, so you know if you know, I, I encourage you to get it to the exact size you need, so you're not carrying around a bunch of four meter pieces of aluminum. So when it comes in, all you need to do is just tighten the bolts and put it together, and it's ready to go. Were there any other products you wanted me to touch on? Do you want to talk about that thing in the back? Yeah. Sure. The rack and pinion? So, uh, back here in the back, we have a, a bunch of sort of uh, fine positioning units. And uh, so, especially those of you who are going to be doing experiments where you need to line one sensor up with something else that you're studying, these are must have. <coughs> and uh, actually, remember how we were talking in the lecture, uh, I guess on Monday, about how you can have heelable teeth on different uh, gears? This is actually heelable rack and pinion. Um, these are called usually microscope slides or miniature positioning slides. Again, if you're doing experimental stuff, anything involving tissue samples or optics or anything, these are huge. Um, this one, I have four of these in my robot. They are awesome. This is very unusual. Most of the time that you buy a linear actuator from somebody and it's got a screw, it's not that drivable like we talked about before. But these are... Uh, extremely high efficiency ball screws, and they also have a, 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 a unique lead angle so that it is back drivable, smooth as butter. I encourage you all to feel it. And the <laughs> backlash in this, remember that? I think my inspection report was like four microns. You can't see that. You need a good microscope to see that. <laughs> They're really nice. So the other thing is, if you're doing, uh, if you're doing some type of force control, you bolt on a nice maxon. If you're just doing an XYZ position control, you bolt on a cheap stepper. You want to do XYZ, bolt them together in five minutes and you're done. And these are super high precision. And the ones I have, I can literally, I can with my full weight step on top of my robot. They're that strong. So anyway, you guys want to pass these around? These are yeah, yeah, go ahead. Pass them all around. Get them going. I also have one with covers so that, you know, when someone bring in a giant bucket of dust and snap all over <laughs> your robot. Um, everything's clean. And you notice the black anodizing? This may seem silly. You know how Apple products look really nice because it's all like color matched and everything? So it actually makes a big difference that we're assuming you can order different surface finishes and that the parts come with things like black anodizing because in the end your robot looks nice, right? It doesn't have all the scratch marks from steel wool from machining mm -hmm. or Tape marks. So, uh, since you brought that up, uh, I worked a lot with a lot of biomedical companies out here, and they're always cosmetic. They're always thinking about how their machine does. With their extrusions, they usually use the black anodizer. It just looks nice. And 
that's something you probably run into later. You actually get a job. <laughs> and, and it's nice, there's no extra fee for it. In, in most cases, when you work something like that, it's a secondary process, which again is going to cost you because you're paying for a lot charge typically. So if you have one piece, it's $75. If you have 10, 20, 100 pieces, it's the same charge. Yeah. So, you know, we don't, we don't charge that. We, we do it all in house. Keep, keep in mind when you're thinking, well, you know, I'm not at a company at Medi University. No one will ever admit this, but it is my strong suspicion that when you're giving a talk, maybe for quals or um, you know for your dissertation, a robot that looks professional and looks really nice tends to attract less uh, irksome questions than something <laughs> that looks like you personally hacks on it the night before. Absolutely, and uh, yeah, and as far as the quality goes with Masumi. Um, I, it, it's easy to say. I mean, you're gonna have to get some of this product in your hand to see how great it is. Um, so I encourage you to try it. Uh, we do guys have we do have you guys set up with a uh, a permanent 30% discount. So when you guys set up your accounts, uh, you will get 30% off of all the pricing. Um, this is just so you guys can get used to us, try to use us as much as you can. And I know you guys have tight budgets on your designs, so we just want to help you out there, and we'll hope that you return the favor and uh, use us in the industry. As far as I'm concerned, that's everything I wanted to cover. We're at about an hour. So unless you have questions, um, let's wrap it up, and then we can talk one-on-one -on -one if you, you want to stay. Okay? Thanks a lot for coming. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you.